So we move on and the next reaction we are going to study would in the reactions of alkene would be hydroxylation of alkene. I have alkene and, uh, and to this alkene suppose I add KMnO4. Now KMnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent you know this from perhaps class 9th. KMnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent in acidic medium and when it is hot but when it is cold suppose I keep the temperature at 0 degree Celsius and I keep it in basic medium, I keep it in alkaline medium, then the oxidizing nature of KMnO4 is no more there and KMnO4 doesn't oxidize in a sense that it breaks the bond ruthlessly, it just adds hydroxy group to the alkene and we'll see the mechanism how it happens but KMnO4 you have to keep in mind that KMnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent only when it is hot and it is an acidic medium. When it is cold and basic medium, it is not a ruthless oxidizing agent. It becomes calm and a peaceful reagent. And the product which, is pro which it provides with the alkene we get a glycol and we get a cis glycol. Glycol is any compound having two hydroxy group and the both hydroxy group would be on the same side of the plane then it is would be it would be called as six cis glycol. Now uh, this is what you have to remember. Now for writing the product what you have to do is you have to add a wedge group on both both the carbon forming the pi bond and in a cis orientation. That's how you would get the product. Now, We'll see the mechanism how we got it. Now KMnO4, if you know the structure of KMnO4, KMnO4 forms three double bond with oxygen and one single bond with one of the oxygen. That 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 gives us magnate per magnate ion, and you have K plus. That is KMnO4. Now KMnO4, if you look at man manganese, then there are there are lots of pi bond surrounding this manganese and there will be repulsion of course among those pi bonds and the repulsion between double bond and double bond is much higher than a double bond and a single bond because in the double bond there is a pi bond and pi bond the electron in a pi bond are loosely held so they offer larger repulsion to the adjacent electronic density so there is a lot of repulsion in this mangan per magnet ion because of three double bonds because of the three pi bonds so in under this situation we would like to remove this uh, repulsion between electrons and one of the way out to do that is to convert these double bonds into single bond so if we convert this double bond into single bond then the extent of repulsion would be decreased to to much of an extent because the double repulsion between double bond and double bond will be much higher than the repulsion between single bond and single bond. So if we can do that, convert this double bond into a single bond, then that would ease up the repulsion, the pressure on this manganese atom. So that how we do it is, or how molecules does it is, Now, although we, we know we know very well that this pi this this carbon carbon double bond is non-polar, it has electronic density, and this this pi bond also has electronic density. Oxygen has lone pair. As such, what I have taught you up till now is this these this kind of species which is electron rich do not approach electron rich species. But here, since since we have to reduce or the molecule has to reduce the rep the electronic repulsion because of the double bond. And in order to ease up, in order to make the system more thermodynamically stable, there in the field of the magnet ion, this double bond of the alkene will become slightly polar and the electron from this oxygen would go, from this oxygen or this pi bond 
will go to the orbital of carbon. The electron of this pi bond will come to the orbital of oxygen and the electron of this pi bond will go into the orbital of manganese. Effectively what will happen, there will be a bond formed between oxygen and carbon and from here there will be again a bond formed between oxygen and carbon and the manganese will get back its two electrons. So those two electrons will be in the form of unpaired electrons. So when this happens, what we get is We get an intermediate like this. Now, as you can see, around manganese, there are two single bonds instead of these two double bonds. So, thermodynamically, the system has become more stable. This is the intermediate and the bond between oxygen and manganese is a weak one. Because of the electronegativity difference, the electronic density is shifted much towards oxygen. And this is not like a carbon-oxygen covalent bond. So, it will break very easily. The oxygen will go with the carbon and carbon and these there will be a two hanging OH with the carbon and very intuitively you can feel how we will get the product. This MnO2 will come out. So once this has happened, we will get R, we'll get a glycol, we'll get a vicinal diol, two hydroxy group, two alcoholic group, eight descent to each other vicinal diol or in general we call these compounds as glycol and we have MnO2. Effectively we have a cis glycol if we add cold alkaline KMnO4 to a alkene. That's the bottom line of this reaction. Fine. Now the same reaction can also be carried by using osmium tetroxide instead of potassium cold alkaline potassium permanganate. If we use osmium tetroxide, now OS is osmium, you know, and if we, if, we, if we use osmium tetroxide, then the same, the mechanism would be the same, the whole idea would be the same. Again, here we have four pi bonds surrounding osmium, and there will be lots of repulsion among all these four pi bonds. Now, in order to reduce that repulsion, we will like the pi bonds to go away in order to make the system thermodynamically stable. So again the same process will start the pi bond will come here into the orbital of carbon this pi bond will go to the orbital of oxygen and pi bond the electron of this pi bond will go into the orbital of osmium and we will get the same similar intermediate and then again there will be a cleavage between oxygen and the metal this bond will break 2 OH will go along with the carbon giving us glycol and OSO2 will come out. This OSO2 will again go and do the same process with another alkene and ultimately will get metallic osmium. That is not of our interest. What is of our interest is we will get from here a cis glycol. So this is hydroxylation in the sense that we are adding hydroxy group to the alkene and we are getting vicinal dihydroxy group, we call it vicinal diol or a glycol. Fine. So this is what it is. We'll, the product would be the same, the side product will be different but the main organic product would be the same in case of KMnO4, cold KMnO4. Remember, if generally when we ri write only KMnO4, that in general means a oxidizing agent that would be a hot ac acidified KMnO4. In order to do this reaction, we have to specify that it's a cold KMnO4 by specifying the temperature 0 to 5 degrees Celsius, low temperature, and in a basic medium, alkaline medium. Now, this reagent is also called as Bayes reagent. Now, generally, they will write Bayes reagent or they will write KMnO4 cold, they will specify the temperature and uh, uh, in, in alkaline medium or to do away with all these they will just write Bayes reagent. Bayes reagent remember is a cold KMnO4 in alkaline medium. Bayes reagent will carry out cis hydroxylation of alkene, so will do, uh, so would be done by osmium tetroxide. Fine.
Now, there is also a trans hydroxylation of alkene, and let's see how that happens. <laughs> 